We're going to get to Cuba, and we ran out of time, and I know you want to disagree with me, and you don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear what you have to say. Well, I mean, I think I said it in the monologue. We, uh, we have, uh, or somewhere in this show, yeah. we have uh, stood with worse dictators. I think Cuba in the Freedom Watch list is 62nd out of 177 countries, one being the worst. Yeah. So it's, it's behind China, I think Iran, Egypt, which is not a great place to be, but it's ahead of a number of our allies like Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. So I guess where I'm coming from is that the United States has all of the leverage in this situation. And if you're looking at what Raul Castro's plan is, I believe the plan is not to do what China and Vietnam have done, not to have a kind of, you know, basically move away from a socialist economy. I believe they're looking to Vladimir Putin. They're looking to, you know, Chavez's Venezuela. They want to have sham elections, and he wants to install his son or his son-in-law in power, and we're allowing that to happen. Now, we have all the leverage. I believe we should open up to Cuba, and I believe we should normalize relations. We but we can, we can demand a lot more because they're at the this most is, vulnerable this point. This is what we, we're going on for 50 years. No, it hasn't been going on because what I'm saying is that actually we should open up, but we can now demand more from them in terms of how they treat their citizens well, they, okay. and also having an open and competitive political these process. These things take time. Of it's course weak, it takes time. It's, it's weak. But one, we, we're never going to have more leverage to, than we do right now. They used Jesus. to look to Russia and Venezuela for exactly cash. For cash. Now yeah. they can't. They're 90 exactly. miles away That's from the world's largest economy. And if they open the door a little crack, we're going to overwhelm them. And they're doing that. I feel that. very That's comfortable that in five years' time, yes. these guys are gone. That's 50 years just, of sanctions, get them there. That's you know the what? fantasy. Yeah, I That's, totally look, I mean, he went. Just Why is it it went? He looked at Raul Castro. He spoke to the Cuban people. He that. talked about democracy. I mean, that's the first time. The Castro family, they're not idiots. They know what they're doing. They've given this a lot of thought. Okay. And if they believe that Ian was right, 80s. if they didn't, they have a plan B. That's my point. Their plan B is sham okay. elections. In 2018, all right. it's all ready to but, go. But, you know, we can't make everybody in the world do everything right, we want leverage. to do. <laughs> of course we can't. Of course, of course we can, we can make of, everyone do... Of course do we can't. Oh, great. Of course we can, but the great. point is that why surrender all of your leverage when they're at their weakest point right now? We're not surrendering right all our leverage. We're, we're trying... No, benefit we can for never, us, We can too. never... We're yeah, trying something... Benefit for us. We're trying we're a different so tactic larger. from the one that didn't work for 60 fucking years. The, what a crazy uh, idea. The, the tactic is let... We have one big carrot to offer, that is normalizing relationships and actually offering them the huge economic no, opportunities that... Ending the embargo would be another big carrot. Yeah. But, yeah, we're not doing that, even though most Americans are for doing that. Normalizing relations is a rather big thing, and having Starwood and having Airbnb sign deals and getting hard currency yes. into the hands of the repressive That's how their apparatus minds are of Cuba. are going to change. They're going to... Starwood's going to be there. They're going to meet Americans. So that, that's, right. worked in, that's worked in Putin's Russia. That's worked... Uh, you know, that's going to work in Iran. I mean, it's, that's going to work in all the other authoritarian countries where they figured out... They're smart, too, Bill. They are strategic, I, I, too. They've yeah. given this some thought, and they think that they're going to come out ahead. Okay. And I think they're probably all right. right. All right. With that said, do any of you have a good cigar connect? Because I just started uh, <laughs> This is the man to talk to. what I care about. <laughs> uh, what are the chances of delegates turning on Trump if there is a brokered convention in July? I think pretty good, right? I it, think pretty good, too. Yeah, I mean, it I depends mean, on who those delegates are. They're working them now. Yeah. I mean, everybody on I'm the sure. other teams are, are you, working those are delegates. Are you a super delegate? I'm not a super delegate, and I wouldn't be on that side. But I know that they are working no, that. No, for the Democrats. No, you're not a super delegate. I used to be when I was governor, but I'm oh. not anymore. Oh, are you a delegate? I'm not a delegate. No. Yeah, no, just to watch I'm it on TV. I'm just a regular citizen. <laughs> wow, I'm I'm very surprised. Uh, will the new voter ID laws being introduced in key states across the country influence the outcome of the election? Fuck yes. Yes. Of course. It like it did in Arizona. As everybody oh, who was watching right. that five-hour fiasco? total fiasco, they went from 200 polling sites to 60 in a in a heavily Latino county. People had to wait in line for five hours. What, wouldn't it be great if the Supreme Court just once went? Ah, we got this wrong. Well, the you know, we is... gutted the Voting Rights Act. We thought America was better than it was. And it turned out we could not have been more wrong. Is there any argument on the, the other the, side? The problem is that when we talk about voter ID laws, you've got very different laws in different states. Some of those laws, Pennsylvania, for example, that's a really bad law. But then if you're looking at Rhode Island, you're looking at Tennessee, you're looking at other states, they're not all the same. So the problem is when we talk about voter ID laws, well, you're talking about a bunch of different provisions. They're all for, they're all for limiting... states since 2000. 
2010 have adopted more restrictive, make it more difficult to vote laws. 21 states have. This will be the first presidential election for 16 of those states. They're largely in the South. They're largely trying to affect minorities. Two, two quick students. points. Two quick points. One yeah. is this is a solution looking for a problem that doesn't exist. And any time right. you're restricting votes, it's bad. But the but the unspoken truth that's happening in America and the one the biggest disenfranchisement we've seen since uh, we were fighting on the Edmund Pettus Bridge and others were fighting on the uh, for voting rights uh, is the disenfranchisement that's going on of uh, people who've been convicted of nonviolent drug offenses. We right now have a country where the drug war the drug war is not a war on drugs, it's a war on people, particularly poor people, particularly minorities. And so now you have a nation where you have swing states like Virginia and Florida, where one out of every five African Americans has lost their right to vote. And so we have this outrageous reality in this country right now where our prison population since 1980 has grown 500 percent, federal prison population 800 percent, more people in jail today for nonviolent drug offenses and all the people in jail for 1975 being locked up for doing things the last two presidents said they're doing, and now they're in a second-class citizenship, a caste system where they can't get jobs, they can't vote, they can't get Pell Grants, they can't get food stamps, they can't get housing, uh, public housing. Uh, they've entered this caste system, and it's an affront to our democracy because basically what we're doing is millions of Americans, we're cutting them out, taking away their voice and their participation in our country. So it's Yeah, what he said. Well, look, and you also have conservatives and liberals who are agreeing on this, this and who are seeking to this reform this not, system. Not so a partisan issue. This is, I, yeah. I'm partnering on legislation with everybody yeah. from uh, allies, from the Koch brothers to others, trying to fight something, a system that's completely broken. Absolutely. One of the greatest tragedies going on in our country right now uh, is that what we are doing to entire communities like the one uh, that I've lived in for the last 20 years is we're devastating these communities. It's a chance for an African American to be arrested. And by the way, no difference between blacks and whites for using drugs, no difference for dealing drugs, except for some studies show that young white men have a higher rate of dealing drugs than young blacks, but an African American will get arrested for drug crimes about four times more than white. And this actually might make communities more dangerous. That's the really scary thing, because if you want to right. be tough on crime, it turns out that actually using incarceration too much, you actually change the dynamics in these communities in ways that make them more dangerous for the people who live there. And that is really, really bad. I used to deal drugs, did you? I, I, I did not deal drugs. Hey, right there. <laughs> Anecdotally. <laughs> did you ever uh, deal drugs, Gerard? What's that? Did you ever deal drugs? No, but back in my day, I was known as an excellent bagger. <laughs> <laughs> you, you used to deal drugs? Oh, in college, yes. Well, yes, yes. I was, yeah. was going to say just. I was going to say just pot, but that would be a lot. <laughs> I mean, when I got out of college, it was just pot. But yeah. in college, it was whatever my dealer had. So you were, you would buy from your dealer. You were like a middleman. You'd buy from your dealer and you'd sell the. Oh, well, that's not very nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought of myself as an entrepreneur, <laughs> middleman. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, but was, that's it was the 70s. Right. You know, no, but it still goes on today. Look, I, I went when I, I went to Stanford, and there that's was how a I lot, got through college. By was, the way. Well, there's a oh, lot really? of drug use going on. Wait, wait, wait! You, you paid your way through college stealing drugs? Yeah. That's a wow. Yeah, maybe I'm gangster now. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> for, for, wait, wait, for, for, for the record, for the record, still no. The answer still no. Why? Because I'm white? <laughs> yeah, kind of. A little bit. No. <laughs> no, no. You're gangster. Fine, Bill. You're yeah. gangster. More, more gangster <laughs> than you. Is Donald, <laughs> is Donald Trump, Ian Bremmer, off base in suggesting that the U.S. rethink its involvement in NATO? You know what? Let's ask a different question that's close to that. Trump said this week that he was not putting nuclear weapons off the table dealing with ISIS because we need to be unpredictable. Uh, you know, you had me at Trump and nuclear weapons. I mean, that, right, but, that's all but, I mean, it's true. That's a crazy thing to say. Is well, it I mean, I, I would say number one, uh, uh, Trump's slogan is not uh, "Make America Great Again." It's "America First, and it's "Let's find everyone else to blame." Mexicans are going to come to rape our women. Japanese and Chinese are robbing us blind. The Europeans are taking advantage of our goodwill on security. Muslims are all going to blow us up. Um, that's, that's a problem, right? And we see that with NATO as well. But I have to say, at least from my perspective, um, I, I, I think the likelihood that Trump actually could win a general election, given the astonishing negatives he has among young, among women, among just normal Americans, I, is, is really, really low. And I know we're talking about it because we have to and it's entertaining, but I just... I well, just don't so think it's worth entertaining. entertaining. He could be the Republican nominee and probably will be. And by the way, in this country, the Republican can always win. 
uh, you know, they always said, well, uh, you know, the, the Republicans are losing uh, m minorities and they're losing women. Yeah, but they, they never tried a race war election. Yeah. They never, like, really roused up those people who, when you lift up the rock, you find out what's living in this country. <laughs> and Obama got, like, 40 something percent of the white vote against Mitt Romney, Trump's going to get more. And I think combine if, that with no, he's nine, no, laws. He's nine percentage no. points behind Romney among no. white no. voters. No. But what I will say, I'm... Trump is? Yes, in a general election, yeah. He's well behind Romney among white but voters. But he's going to move to the middle. He's going to move to the middle. That's the no, problem. Look, I, this I, is I, why this is no, important. I, I don't think he will move to the middle. No, I think he doesn't know how to do that. No, he's going to He does not know how to adjust. I think that... He's who he is. Who you're talking about, Ted. No, no, I'm no, talking about Trump. He doesn't Trump. know how to adjust no. either. Oh no, no, Trump. No, Ted will know how to move to the middle. No, not Trump. I don't. Trump I disagree with you. Trump I think will that not. Trump, no, Trump no. knows only try. one speed. No, he I'm will the try. best. No, he will say stuff that is appealing. He's not. You know, obligated seven, to be consistent. No one expects no, I, him to exactly do. right. Seventy percent of women, for example, can't bear the thought of voting for Trump in a general election. All women. He's going to say yes. But he's gonna he's gonna try to figure that out. Remember, he's super smart. He went to Wharton, so <laughs> so he's gonna try to figure out the language that makes him more palatable to groups. He's gonna that's, do that, that's, and that's, that's what, what he might do is divide. He's never done that. What he might do I is deliver a that. serious yeah. blow to the yeah. Republican Party for one ten years. Time where he got more reasonable. He calculatedly well, said, you know what, I think I'm going to be... He says that he doesn't want to see poor people out in the street. He doesn't. He wants to have health care for everyone. I mean, he said that, right? No, actually, he said the thing about trade, which is a Democratic position often, and he thinks that we should be creating jobs in America. He has said stuff that is appealing to, to my side of the aisle. And I think that he positions. will... Yeah, no, I mean, he, he, he will, he will but, try to well, moderate. But he's to constitutionally to get incapable of not doing crazy what? when he's in front of a camera, right? That's the point. Yeah, but, but we saw him reading from a teleprompter. Right. We saw him yeah. at APAC no. reading from a teleprompter. He, we saw him being disciplined. Right. You know, yeah. it, it happened once, he can do it again. He fucked it up anyway. <laughs> yeah, one yeah. little thing yeah. he went off. Can I tell you what's interesting about Trump? I've never seen white people scramble before. Like, I've never seen, like, white America really, like, confused and, like, what the fuck are we going to do about this? <laughs> it's very interesting. It's very Republican. intriguing. Like, Donald Trump, I've compared... Donald Trump, to me, is, is, like, white Hurricane Katrina. It's like, we didn't realize it was going to be... We didn't... The levees have broken, and everyone is panicking right now, and it's very... It's interesting to watch. <laughs> Here too. I love it too, but but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Trust I, me, it's I, gonna be worse for you. But than here's the thing. I'm, I'm from the hood. I don't trust anybody. I think everybody's corrupt. <laughs> but you don't think it matters if Trump is or anybody? No, else? of course it matters. I mean, it, it definitely matters. I'm just saying it's, it's an intriguing thing to watch. Like, I mean, I think you know, I, I've I've had a healthy mistrust of literally every candidate that's sure. ever existed in my lifetime. So I'm like, yeah, he's in the pile yeah, with the others. Obama. Um, with Obama, listen, we were all very excited. We're all very... We were young. We were excited. We were very happy, you know? And, and, and until Corey runs, you know, we're just gonna hang out. <laughs> uh, when is uh, that gonna be? I, 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 when I, is that? I was about to chime in and say that these are the days where I, I'm gonna run, but not necessarily for something, more like from something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're gonna give the white people a turn, and they're gonna fuck it up, and then you're gonna be like... <laughs> So, so to you're go. gonna be like, come on. So, <laughs> the, Obama was pretty good. You miss him. The and, first time I was on the yeah. show, I, uh, you, made, you, you said that, hey, this Obama, <laughs> if he gets this thing right, you remember this joke, don't you? <laughs> no. That they're gonna think that these black guys are good at this thing, like basketball. They're gonna. Be, <laughs> <laughs> that was the first. That was my introduction to this show. And here, here it is, eight years later, and I'm still suffering through the same joke. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. We gotta go.